What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. We've been waiting on back order parts on this thing. They're finally starting to come in. You'll notice we have had this truck up on jack stand sitting here in front of the garage door. We've got a lot to do on the 911 this week and that we've been doing. And with some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in the video later this week on the 911, we need to actually get the car rolled out of the garage. So this has to get out of the way with the parts finally in. Let's get this truck knocked out. Let's get it running on its own systems, fuel, coolant and all. And let's see if this truck will drive around. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. All right, the first thing that I'd like to go ahead and get installed is the shifter assembly. Now you can use bracketry and stuff to use the original shifter, but I opted to go ahead and go with the shifter that came out of the car. It's a little bit better design and they work fairly well. What I did is order this bracket from S&P, which actually goes in place of the old shifter, but then adapts, let me put it the right way, adapts on, you have two bolts there and then you have to drill two holes through the tunnel and then it'll bolt down there and then you'll have your whole shifter in there and we can just run our cables up to the transmission and we'll have the whole assembly. Now, first thing I've gone ahead, we got our bracket on here. It's just kind of roughly in place and then we can pull our shifter up through. Oh, and we can get it bolted on here. Now from under here, you can see we're actually bottoming it out before we even get to the studs. So we may have to do some trimming. All right, and there we have it, looking pretty sharp. Bolted through and everything. Everything's nice and tight and just the way it needs to be. I went ahead and got some paint down there. Once we got that in, I went ahead and ran our lines. Now I've got a little bit of fidgeting to do once we start running the exhaust. But we got our clips in and we have it latched on. Now, when you're going to latch these on, what you'll do is you'll twist this and latch it. You'll Pull this back and then turn it and it'll latch on both of those to allow these to be loose. You see your little pin here. So you'll have this kind of in the neutral position here and then you'll slowly push it down until this pushes in and then you'll feel it kind of hold it exactly where it is. Now that's plastic so you gotta be really careful. Now with that in, this is actually a five millimeter hole. I ended up taking this little, used to be a square screwdriver, trimmed it off, and you'll get this in its place, and then you drop it down into there, straight through, and then you can go relatch those, and that actually aligns your whole shifter assembly if you're ever replacing it or anything, or it just needs an adjustment because of some wear. And with all that done, look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, I wanted to put our original console back in there, Yes, I had to cut it up a little bit. There was no way for it to actually latch in anywhere. So I have one screw for it to hold in for now and I'm gonna have to do some work to get it exactly how I want it. Now the original shift knob to the Beetle, pretty good looking shift knob, kind of has the GTI style look and it's good shape, but I wanted to be able to retain our original boot there. Now originally it was held on with this little clip, but it was a vinyl or a, it was vinyl instead of the thick rubber. So we couldn't use that. And so what I did was actually slid it on there and then got some stainless wire tie. It's not the best shape, but it was actually allowed us to pop through and then I tied it really nice and tight, pushed it all the way up to the top. And boom. And there you go. How cool is that? I know a lot of people like the Ray shift towers and stuff, but I don't know. That factory look is... Pretty cool, huh? All right, so one of the next things it's time to jump onto are the CV axles. We got this thing running, we need to be able to drive it, and we have to have those. Now, because we're going from the Mark IV to the Mark I setup, you got 100 millimeter axles on that O2J transmission, and they go to that Mark I style small hole CV axle on the end. So what you actually get are Mark three and a half Cabrio CV axles. I don't know. That's just what works on these. And so that's what you get. And also, if you guys know how CV axles work on these, 
with lowered vehicles, they have two different styles. Well, they, they just actually recently started making the newer style, but all your factory ones, they're hollow, and so they step up and they're big, thick CV axles. So what I ordered was actually a solid. This is a lot stronger and a lot smaller, which will help us out with our lowered truck. One nice thing with this new hardware, if you've ever taken CV axles off of Volkswagen, you know they have those crappy 12 point, and these are actually Allens. So that's gonna be a lot nicer going in and coming back out if we ever have to pull them. Now I'm out of gloves, so let's get messy. <laughs> Basically what you gotta do is just pack it in there like a bearing, and then when you get ready to put it on, do not forget your gasket. Do not forget to put these on. All right, y'all, so we've got both axles in, and I did say that incorrectly earlier. I said Mark 3.5 Cabrio. I ordered those so long ago, I completely forgot exactly what I got, apparently. So this is actually Mark 1 Cabrio Lay, so like 85 to 93 Cabrio Lay and Scirocco 100 millimeter axle. So that's what those are. Those are the ones you need, not Mark 3.5. My bad. <laughs> now, the only issue you have once you get these all in here is when you go to tighten them all the way down, it'll actually bind the hub. And that's because this is just a little bit bigger. You can either grind the hub out on the backside, grind the CV axle down, or install this Hillman machine washer. This is a part number 882803. And this was suggested by a few other people that have used it and haven't had any issues. So we'll go and throw one of those in there, snug her up, and we should be good to go. All right, with those thrust bushings installed, and everything bolted back together. Shoot, yeah. So we have a shifter now. We have CV axles. And now it's time to get a clutch working. All right, so from right there, I went ahead and removed that original hydraulic actuator. And that just has two 13 millimeter bolts and pops right out of there. And then this is our kit from Eurowise. So this actually has a machined aluminum cable holder and actuator. And this is very similar and based off the Eurovan actuator because it actually uses a cable. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we have to make this thing work. But apparently we're going to be have to be shaving down this entire reverse switch hobbin thing right here. So first thing we've got to do is take that back out of the transmission. First thing you'll do, take that little shiny clip off. Get that out of there. All right, now we've got the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold this into the transmission. I've never had one of these out, so I don't know what we're getting into. Oh, loose. Make sure we still have it there in the neutral position. And it does have a little flat with a double together uh, groove, so you can only put it one way. There it goes. Oh boy. All right, once we got it off, I took the side grinder and you can see shaved it all down that whole entire little pocket that sticks out there and then i took some brown silicone brown black like oil silicone rtv filled that hole in really nice and let it dry up and so it has a good barrier there and obviously it's covered up it's not nothing's really going to get to it once we did that we were able to put our bracket on super easy and then bolt on our actuator super easy then you can kick and adjust your cable where you need it. And now we have clutch actuation. All right, with our clutch working like it needs to, we need a pedal. And the way we're gonna attach this is you can get this bracket right here from S&P. And it actually just goes up in here. This is where your factory pedal goes. There's a little pin, slides right out. And then this bolts right here. All right, and there you have it up in there. A little aggravating to get to that bolt there. Everything is up under a little car like this. We have some pedal actuation. That's good. Now it's time to start running some wiring. See if we can get this truck to pop back off, fire up, shift into gear, and get some movement going. Now you remember we have our harnesses here, and I had them roughly done 
From SMP, I ordered this pretty cool felt style tape, and this is like the factory style tape. And you can see it just gives it a really cool, really clean, really nice finish. And I've gone through and taped everything up, and now we need to go ahead and start routing it through the car the way it needs to be. Now I hate to, oh, I hate to, I tried to get away from this, but I'm gonna have to do some trimming. I did not want to, but I don't wanna have to depin all of our plugs to make stuff fit. So what I'm actually gonna do is come up right here, connect these two holes and have one nice good size opening here. I should be able to fit my plugs through there and then I can make a grommet at the end of the day to actually fit up in there and close it all off nicely. So we have that kick through, also have our starter wire, and it runs over. I got our ECU stuck here for now, plugged in. I did have to cut a little hole there to run this, the wire, the 13 pin wire through, and that whole wire for this. This is our N75, well one of these is, I gotta figure out which one it is, and that's the only thing that I need to finish up on this harness really. But right there is all of that, and then I have both of our upper grounds here. I cleaned that up, drilled through, got them bolted on i'll actually probably end up epoxying this or making some kind of a bracket for it to mount in there we may end up putting it on this side but i like it there because it's going to really be covered up and out of the rain we don't want that thing getting any kind of moisture all right and you see we have that kick down through Ooh. there's all of our main plugs most of this does not get used obviously just these two the rest of this is going to be all zip tied up and we have this wire here with all of our power stuff going on. And then I actually ran this up to a battery. This is a big eight gauge. That's gonna be our main power for everything. All right, so this is not much different than how it was before. Uh, I did tie this, oh, that ground up into there. I may have to do something a little different. We've got this hooked up back in there. Our pedal is now plugged in. We have our fuse box but I run it on all through this large switch. So this will be all the power for everything. This should just allow us to turn everything on and we need to turn everything off and it'll kind of be separate, probably separate from the ignition switch. It would be kind of cool if someone come in here and try to crank this thing, it ain't gonna do nothing. And then here is actually our push starter. And so I'll probably have to figure out some kind of little box or something that I can keep our gauges that I want for this and I can keep these two switches and that should be all we need to run this thing. Let me go ahead and stick a battery in here and let's see if any of this wants to work. Fingers crossed, still a little nervous. And I did go ahead and use this original relay box just for the time being. We may end up using it, may not, but it has all those main fuses, which is just another good fail safe basically because we don't want to kill anything like an ECU <laughs> all right power on uh, ignition Woo! <laughs> yes turbo <laughs> oh but my neighbors over there said old act like a little kid but holy crap <laughs> so i don't know if it's because i put that little tip of exhaust on there just for the time being i still need to build a full exhaust but just a little bit of exhaust on there made all the turbo sounds in the world oh my goodness that's awesome <laughs> all right so one day before the three months mark after ordering this and there she is. The final thing we were waiting on to get this truck on the road. All right, and there you have it set in the truck there. You can see we have really nice fitment. Nothing had to be cut or moved around. We have plenty of room here to get to stuff. Obviously, if you had power steering, which we don't in this Mark 1, you would have a little issue there, but we don't. And you can see we have our bolts on our original mounts so it is mounted on the bottom but 
it's flopsy so we need to get that taken care of fitment's pretty nice it's got a little the gap is not quite the same which actually may be this truck it's an older truck i'm sure it's been beat around a little bit and stuff in the past but overall fitment is really nice on this we just need to go ahead and create a bracket here now i don't like drilling or cutting or messing with anything here so what i'd like to do is use at least those two holes right there let's get a piece of aluminum and let's go ahead and make a little step bracket to actually hold this in its place and we can start getting our hose mounted up and get some cooling in this thing all right so i've got a piece of aluminum plate here should give us just enough for what we need. Let's go ahead and you can see I've put a couple marks here and let's get this thing trimmed up to size and then we can start figuring out exactly the way that we want it. Aluminum. Man, aluminum's never any fun. What a mess. <laughs> All right, now you can see we've got it down to that main size that we want. We've got our 90 here that we will be using. In hindsight, I probably should have used this side. It's going to be a little easier to clean up, but we'll get that cleaned up pretty nice. Let's see. So we're going to use these two holes here so I don't have to drill anywhere. And it'll sit about like so. Alright, so we held this up into place. I've got sharpie marks where we need our two holes drilled. We'll take our punch. Let's center them. Best idea is to go ahead and do one first because I'm not using my drill press because it's not in the shop right now. What I'm going to be using is just a drill. And the best way to go is just go ahead and get it drilled, get one screw ready, put it in there, recheck this hole. So you make sure because they'll fluctuate just a little bit. We want to be sure we're not way off and have to waller it out. There you go. All right, with our piece made, it's time to go ahead and start cleaning it up. First, we want to wet sand it. We're going to start with an 800 grit, and we're going to wet sand it. Hmm, let's get a little more abrasive with it. Here's some 150, which might be too much, but we should have just started with that side. <laughs> Is that perfect? No, it's not. It does have a mirror finish, but obviously we have some scuffs and scratches. This was actually a piece from a tabletop, but it just shows you what you, I just wanted to, obviously I have a few better tools now to be able to do stuff like this, but I wanted to be able to show you what you can do with just an old scrap piece of aluminum to touch up your engine bay. And there we have it all mounted up. I've got a rubber, but what I did was bolt it, put a nut on it so it was tight, put a bushing in between. Now we've got a good, solid, firm radiator. Like I said, I may re-sand that some and refinish it a little bit, but I'm pretty pleased with the way it came out. We've got a good, solid radiator in there. 
Now let's go ahead and get our lower hose ran so we can get our fan shroud stuck back in there and get our upper hose ran and start finishing that cooling system so we can run this thing a little bit longer. There you go. Lower hose mounted in. That whole jungle of stuff is starting to work together, but it fills this engine bay, but I think it'll be really fun. Okay, the next piece to this coolant system puzzle is our coolant ball. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I like the look of the newer one versus the original. And so we need to make that mount there. I may possibly end up deleting this in the near future, but I don't want to go grinding this off or anything. So I think it'll look pretty good mounted right here. Now I've gone ahead and we've got a piece of angle that actually will slide in and latches right there. So what we need to go ahead and do is we need to cut the curve of this out of the side and then we need to drill two holes right here so we can get this thing bolted on and then we can start running some hoses. Oh, poopy. What is that? All right, so you can see I've gone ahead. We ran this upper hose right here. We have this hose that ties into the head right here. We have this lower hose for the coolant ball there that runs around and ties back in here. And you can see we went ahead and put the shroud in. So the way we were actually able to do that is we went ahead and just took this fan off. You can see it's designed to be removed and it should be A-OK -okay with that diesel. These don't create a ton of heat, but obviously we'll keep an eye on our temperature. We don't want to overheat it. If we have to design something different or put a pusher fan style, we may do that, but I think we're gonna be okay there. So as you can see, a lot of times I've seen people make crazy brackets that bolt on here and stuff to mount our fuel filter. What I've gone ahead and done, and you, as you can see, this right here is actually when you have a gas car, you have the CIS system and everything right here, your whole intake box. And so your wiper fluid is over here instead of right there. But on this truck, it's there. I don't think we'll actually use it. If we will, it'll go back there. So anyways, this is unused. So what I decided to do is actually take the bracket that goes here and I went ahead and just tacked it in right there. You gotta grind it down a little bit and it just slides right in there. Obviously it's not used in this truck anyways. So it could be, the tacks can be cut right off. That could be removed, but boom. There you have our fuel, fi fuel filter. I went ahead, we put coolant in this. We have the whole system full. It probably needs to, we need to run it, let the thermostat open, let everything bleed. But for the most part, we don't have any leaks. I think we're gonna be okay. All right, so whew, I got a mess everywhere trying to figure this thing all out. But we're super close. We have our fuel system hooked back up to the truck and we have a complete cooling system now.
Man, don't you just love that? What an awesome sound. <laughs> Turbo diesel Volkswagen Rabbit pickup. Running on its own fuel. It's got its own cooling system now. We are a few steps away from having this thing on the road. You want to know if the suspension's stiff enough? <laughs> Yeah, give me just a second, please. Yeah. I'm gonna tug up on the truck. Will you pull it out from under there, please? Just pull it out. What is it? Just check. Right here, baby. Yeah. Yep. You ready? Pull it out. No, you gotta go. You gotta. You gotta hold it flat. And go straight out. All right. Go. 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 Okay. Thank you. High five. Oh. <laughs> All right. Now, obviously, we don't have our intake snorkel and we don't have our intercooler pipes or anything run yet, so we don't have any boost or anything. But I want to be see if this thing will move under its own power with everything that we've done so far. We've got the transmission hooked up, we have all of our lines, our cooling system going, and everything. And I want to see if it'll at least move up and down the road right here. And then later on this week, I'm taking it to a friend of mine's house and he's going to help me fab up some intercooler piping and stuff so we can get everything run, get this thing full boost, put those 230 race injectors in here, and really have some fun with it. But let's go ahead and see if it'll move under its own power. taking off the first gear this time. ton of work but it moves and there you have it our 1980 early westmoreland rabbit pickup truck alh turbo diesel swap is moving under its own power we've got a few things left obviously the truck needs to come up quite a bit in suspension it's sitting too low <laughs> but nothing's rubbing the drive shafts we went those smaller solid drive shafts are doing really well i think we get this thing dialed in height wise we get all of our boost stuff dialed in this truck is going to be an absolute blast. This has been such a big project, especially doing a lot of the stuff on our own, figuring out that entire electrical system and everything. And it's so cool to see, uh, what do you call it, the fruits of, your of the fruits of my labor coming to life. And I cannot wait to see it on the 911. This truck is now out of the way of the garage. We can pull that car out once more and wrap a few more things up on it i think that's going to wrap it up for this episode though either this weekend or sometime next week you should be seeing another video basically completion video on this truck we'll take it up and down the road and give it some rips i think that'll be really fun get some exhaust on this thing if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff especially the rebuilds this swap kind of stuff we have some really 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 cool fun stuff coming up that i think will be really exciting and not only more of that but more of the 911 and some of our other previous builds that we're still going on. I think we're just a few hundred away from 100,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you all enough. It is absolutely so cool to be at that point and we could not do it without you all, but thank you all so much. 
peace out and catch y'all on the flip side.